In an Atar jet engine, some 60 kilograms of air are taken into the engine every second. Drawn through the intake casing by a powerful fan, the compressor, it flows through nine sets of stator vanes and nine sets of compressor blades in a spiral movement during which its pressure is progressively raised to six times the atmospheric pressure. It is then heated to over 1,000 degrees centigrade in the combustion chamber and then expands through the two turbine stages in order to provide the necessary power to drive the compressor. It then flows through the reheat pipe, which may be lighted or not, depending on flight regime, and finally the nozzle. The engine derives its thrust from the flow velocity at the exhaust nozzle. All of these parts, together with the auxiliary parts, are designed, drawn, machined, inspected, assembled, and tested. As an illustration, we have chosen one of the engine main components and will follow it through the process. This is the compressor rotor, which gives the air passing through it a power equal to up to 20,000 kilowatts, or four times the rating of the biggest railway locomotives in a volume smaller than that of a cylinder of about one meter in length and 0.70 meter in diameter. This rotor consists basically of nine discs fitted with blades. The first stage, shown here, has 27 blades, each of which exerts a stress of some five tons on the disc when in operation. Each blade is designed by a team of specialists in the design office. In order to decide upon its aerodynamic shape, a console connected with a computer is used to provide a visual display of the pressure pattern that is desired on the profile. The computer draws the corresponding profile. The velocities and pressures are recorded on a computer printout and stored in a magnetic memory system. Specialists in stressing, vibration and metallurgy can then work on these various profiles, define the material and heat treatment to be used and, if necessary, ask the aerodynamicists to make the necessary changes. The resultant drawings take into account all the specifications laid down by the design office. The blades are made at the Gennevilliers Center, where the acceptance testing laboratory checks the specifications for the material. These checks include macro and microstructure photography, spectrographic tests with an instrument which can determine the proportions of up to 23 different elements in an alloy, mechanical tests on samples. An electronic strain gauge measures the elastic limits of the test sample. Blades are precision forged on a 1,300 ton screw press. The subsequent operations provide a finished forged blade, thus minimizing machining operations. In the surface treatment shop, electrolytic polishing followed by rinsing shows up any superficial or material defects. The blade is then secured in a block by casting a low melting point alloy. This makes it easy to fix the part to a vertical broaching for performing the machining of the blade root. Once this has been completed, the inspection begins. The profile is checked by a follower, an enlargement of whose shadow is projected onto a mirror. The profile is traced in any angular position required.
A multi-point method enables any deviation from the theoretical profile to be determined simultaneously at several points. After acceptance, the blades are sent to the stores of the Corbet assembly shops. At the same time, at Gennevilliers, the crew of the 80,000 kilo per meter drop hammer is forging the wheel discs. blank is progressively flattened and the rim and the hub can be seen taking shape thicker than the web connecting them. Oil quenching is employed to give the disc the required metallurgical properties. The machining process is carried out at Corbeil. The web is machined on both sides simultaneously since it is too thin to withstand the stress of a tool on one side only. The assembly holes are drilled on a multi-spindle machine. The holes are cut with teeth biting progressively into the rim metal with an accuracy of one one hundredth of a millimeter. The machining of the disc is now complete. This leaves the highly accurate and meticulous work of inspection. This machine measures down to one one thousandths of a millimeter. This operation checks magnetically whether the machining process has caused any cracks or brought any to light. The disc is demagnetized before it goes into the stores. In the assembly shop, where all the parts making up the compressor rotor arrive from the stores, the disc blade assembly is carefully balanced since an unbalance of only one gram at the periphery could generate a force of 45 kilograms. The problem is easily resolved by changing a blade for a heavier or a lighter one. The assembly rings are fitted by expanding them slightly using induction heating. The bolts are tightened with a torque wrench. A new assembly technique is used for engines now under development. Here, components of the M53 rotor are electron beam welded. A rotor after welding. 
the assembly including all the stages now has to be balanced. Here, balancing weights have to be added. Rotor diameter is checked for each stage using a comparator. Everything is now ready for final assembly. Remember that each blade can exert a stress of up to five tons. For this reason, discs and blades are subjected at the Villa Roche test center to accelerated aging on a special rig in order to determine their endurance. Each jack applies a tractive force at least equal to the centrifugal force of a blade. The first signs of deterioration can thus be detected and the degree of overspeed leading to failure determined. In some cases, the resistance of discs to bursting is also tested by operating them at overspeed conditions in a vacuum pit. After these tests, the rotor can be supplied to the assembly line where it is first positioned into its stator with which it forms the compressor module. The modules making up the engine are then assembled. They are set out on a jack operated platform so that the work surface is always at a convenient height for the operator. The engine is then brought into the horizontal position on rotating cradles and dressed with accessories and connecting pipes. Each engine is then bench tested in order to check that it meets specifications before being delivered and installed in the aircraft for which it is intended. Thank you.